Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! <laughs> so, Sam, no deal, no fears. I, I, I'm incredibly worried. I think what, what I saw, I mean, great acting, James. Uh, Thanks. If all Thanks. Else, I wouldn't uh, go that far. If all else fails. <laughs> but uh, I think what James is doing is normalising what is an extreme event. To leave without any arrangements whatsoever after 45 years of having a specific set of arrangements is a, an extreme event. And if you just think for a second what the Prime Minister will be saying the day after we leave without any arrangements, it is not going to be a victory lap. It's going to be calling COBRA to make sure... You mean the emergency the, committee, the, emergency the cabinet committee, emergency committee? If I could finish, to make sure that all civil contingencies are managed, to make sure that drugs get, that are in lorries get to hospitals. This is not Project Fear, this is reality. But the key thing here is it is a far cry from what people were told voting leave meant during the referendum campaign. The, the other point I'd like to make, uh, James, and it'll be Quickly, because we need be, to hear from Caroline, it'll, it'll, too. It'll, it'll be good to get this your, is a your, discussion, your, not a speech. Yeah. In fact, you will hold your other point. <laughs> Caroline, we'll hear from you. What's your reaction? Well, I don't support crashing out with uh, no deal. I don't think that's at all helpful. I think we do have to strike a deal, and I think you can't unravel, you know, decades of trade and interconnections in the way we work. And, you know, businesses, small and large, are saying that they need a deal, they don't want a cliff edge, they want a managed process, that's why stage two is so important. But I think it is important too, Andrew, that if you respect the outcome of the referendum, we've got to ensure that we work harder in Parliament to get that deal through. And my concern is, is the other side of the argument, polar opposite, if you like, to James, are those who want to delay Brexit really as a, as a mechanism to stop it altogether. And but, I don't but, think that Yeah, helps but let's stick with the, whether or not we should be frightened of no deal. And picking up uh, in what they're saying, I mean, the Brexiteers like you, James, they used to say that we would leave with, not we wouldn't leave with no deal, they used to tell us we'd leave with the best trade deal <laughs> ever. Uh, and if well, we leave with no deal, we end up having to negotiate a free trade deal somewhere down the line outside, which is going to be much more difficult than negotiating one during the yeah. transition yeah. period Caroline's talking about, when all the existing rules and single market are in place. Let's not forget that one of the reasons that we're in this mess is that, that Theresa did not plan for no deal and her civil servants did not plan for no deal. Recently, they've started catching up as they've, they've begun to realise that no deal is a possibility. And it's also, we, we can see it, we saw it on Question Time tonight, we see it uh, across the country. No deal is what people yeah, but really that's not want. An answer. What's that's the answer not to answer. my question? No. Yeah. What? The, no, the question was that you used to say we'd leave with a great free trade, we'd be the easiest trade deal, it'd be the most far-reaching uh, trade deal. And what I'm saying is, if we follow your way now, where the idea is we do a free trade deal during the transition period, mm. you're saying we just leave without one, at some stage I assume we'd still want to do a free trade deal, we'd be much weaker doing it from the outside uh, as a third party rather than from the inside. We're talking about separate things. We're talking about the, the great deals we're going to get with the, with the growing economies of the world, not the moribund shrinking economy that is the European Union. I, I don't think it really matters that much. We, we're going to carry on trading with the European Union really because they need to trade with us more than we need, we, need, we need them. You, you can't dismiss These the things can be sorted out. on our doorstep. The, the, the chap who's in charge of the shipping at Calais says it's going to be fine. He knows what he's talking about because he runs the shipping at well, Calais. That, well, that, but That's what the, private but, enterprise but on, does. But on, you know, I sit on the Public Counts Committee as well, and we've heard from HMRC and others, we were going to have to go, regardless of Brexit, to smarter borders. Absolutely true. But the truth is we're not ready for that. We haven't got the technology at the moment that can allow the sort of streamline uh, transport of journeying back and forth that we can have in a few years. That's why the transition period is so important. And what I find a bit weird is when I hear some of the people who advocate a no deal talking about a managed no deal. I mean, some of them, I think Nadine Dorries and a couple of others have said, no, actually, we want to manage no deal, a transition period whilst we can sort out the no deal. Well, he's but not what talking we're trying about that. To do, I know he's not. But he's this just talking is, about a no deal. This is the confusion but, 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 around the no deal argument. Let me argument. ask you this. If we leave just on the world trade terms, yeah. the goods that we produce, the farm produ produce we produce, that we export to the EU, they would face tariffs. Yeah. At the moment, there are none 
We, that will hit we, our business and farms. But the European the Euro European market is is shrinking as a share of the global economy. Whereas but it's still parts... 500 million. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, well, and it's going to carry on shrinking. Well, hold on. It may be shrinking. It's not shrinking that. So let's just take sheep farmers. France takes 50% of British lamb exports. There are no tariffs. We live and leave on WTO terms. They face 40% tariffs on most cuts. End of British sheep farming. I'm sure we'll find a way. But they can't that. get What would that way be for our sounding, viewers watching tonight? I'm, I'm not familiar with the workings of the sheep market, I'm but, afraid. But, I mean, Andrew, James, I mean, can my, I just... My point on this is you said, I'm sure we'll find a way. Yeah. That you, what you're doing is you're playing fast and loose with people's livelihoods. And that is what is the problem with this. And not only that, politically, you could usher in a Corbyn government because the shock to the system is so great. No government, responsible government, should impose these problems on the citizens that people vote for a Corbyn government, which you don't want. Are you saying he's a secret Corbynista? I'm well, saying sounds, that well, I'm just the saying surest that he way, will not get what he wants. The surest way of getting a Corbyn government right now, speaking from the perspective of, of, of your party and, and my party, come to mention it, is if you fail to deliver the promise that you made to the people who voted in the referendum. You promised to deliver on, the, on, their, on their vote, and you are not doing so. Anything we, we, we less than no deal is a failure to deliver uh, uh, on that uh, promise. Look, OK, our manifesto promised that we would have an orderly exit from the EU and we will give clarity and certainty to business. What you, your no deal scenario is not orderly, it gives no clarity and it gives no certainty. But, Sam, we might have had a better chance of getting a better deal, a deal that could command a majority in the House of Commons, if the moment this process of negotiation had started, the government had created a no-deal committee, done all the planning, put money behind it, seemed to be serious about it, it might have had no intention of leaving on no deal, but it would have made the Europeans take us much more seriously because they would have thought, well, they're ready to fall back on no deal. Your government has made sure the Europeans know we're no way ready to do that. Or, Andrew, I, I Theresa think, Andrew, May could I, have taken a different I, approach. Instead of relying on the hardline Brexiters and the DUP, she could have actually reached out across Parliament to actually get a reasonable deal through. And that is why she is reaching out now, because she realises she can't just rely on those votes. Andrew, you made a brilliant point. And, and, really? And, and I liked it. Well done, Andrew. That's the first time in 16 years. <laughs> Which was, why do you tumble out onto WTO and then in a weaker position, tried to negotiate... No, it may have been brilliant, but I tried it twice and I didn't get a, an answer. You didn't get an answer? Uh, no. if, if we leave on WTO rules, would we then still unilaterally have zero tariffs and everything coming in from the EU the way it is now? I'm not sure. Um, I just you, no. No, I don't think you can. Can you? They can't give you preferential <clears throat> because, no, it's, because to the UK. It's we're gonna we're gonna take a hit. So but, we would have to put hit, tariffs it's on. It's a things. hit worth taking. Did you say that to oh. people during the referendum that we're going but, to take a hit and it's a hit worth taking? I think every everyone out there right now in the country who voted Leave is not thinking. You know, what we really voted for was kind of half, half in, half no, out. That's, that's not what I'm, I'm asking. Did you tell people that their jobs could be on the line? Did I didn't, you tell people during the campaign I didn't that they could the take a hit? Brochure. No, but you're saying that you're going to take a hit as though we all take a hit. <laughs> Did you tell people that? I'm saying that you can't leave the European Union without consequences. Inevitably, like, like in a divorce, there's going to but be there's going to be question issues. That as far as I understand, if we leave without a deal and then we're on WTO rules, yeah. then we cannot be given preferential treatment in terms of any tariffs um, because no, that's against that's the way that organisation works. We, so therefore, we, how, when you say take a hit, we trade well, what, on the same terms qualify? that America trades with the EU Look, on. Or, or this, with this WTO China. thing is a red herring, right? We are 80% services economy, right? We are 20% goods. WTO covers goods, it doesn't cover services. Right, mind you, the single market doesn't, doesn't cover, cover services, services but, but, that but, much. But, but, that but we, much. we but let, need to address But services. let me ask, uh, uh, just get this clear. If we did leave on WTO rules, we would have to put tariffs on things coming in from Europe. Because if we didn't, if we continued tariff-free, mm we would then have to be tariff-free to the whole world. Mm. Under your WTO rules, you can't pick and choose. Exactly. If, if, if there's no tariff on what you're giving me, 
are exporting. There'll exactly. be no tariffs on what he's doing. Yep. So, and if you did that, why would anybody that's, do a free trade that's, deal? That's the base position. That's the starting position. Yeah. Then you negotiate from there. I mean, why, President Trump has already said that he's happy to give us a, a, no, no, a fantastic but, no, deal. No, no, let me just clarify this. If <laughs> I'm, if, if, if if I'm already, <laughs> if because I'm, I've given the Europeans a no, no tariff access to the British market, under your WTO rules, I have to give the Americans tariff-free access as well. Why would they need to do a free trade deal? They've got the, fr they've got the free trade. Um, I don't know the answer to that. OK. Well, that's honest. And on that, we'll move on. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, it's late. James Dyson late. Yes, just as he was about to see his dream come true, Brexiteer Dyson decided to up sticks and move his company headquarters to Singapore. Maybe what he's been saying in the past was just so much hot air, like one of his fancy fans. Or maybe it dawned on him that Singapore now has a free trade deal with the European Union. And if we leave with no deal, <laughs> We won't. <laughs> Either way, Brexiteers have just had to suck it up again, like one of his fancy machines. I've been